during the Hillary term of January 2013, the Ockham Society invited me to speak for them at the Royal Room of Radcliffe Humanities Building at Oxford University in a 2020 format. As the pragmatic methodology of modal logic chapter of my book, The Question of Non-Being, a pragmatic methodology of continual contingency lasts for 40 minutes, it was too long to be read out loud to the Ockham Society at Oxford University. Discussions of my work, especially that on semantics supervised at the University of Cambridge, has led to philosophers currently supervising PhD candidates at the University of Oxford to demand that more minutes be allocated for them to hear me speak in a series of John Locke lectures. Ryle's The Concept of Mind, published in 1949, has found opposition in D. H. Miller's How to Believe a Conditional, published in the Journal of Philosophy. Thus, my reception in Oxford from Cambridge was one of sensitive caution. D. H. Mellon's current focus is on Ryle's view that dispositional statements are neither reports of observed or observable states of affairs, as an objection to his causal functionalism as a method to show how the contents of contingent beliefs are given by the conditions in which the actions they make desire to fulfil desires. This is a short transcript of a talk about semantics intended to be read to Oxford clubs. To clarify, the question of non-being a pragmatic methodology of continual contingency is a very precise analysis of only 10 words from Shakespeare's Hamlet. This analysis of these 10 words stretches to 80,000 words in an ontological study. The sheer precision and sustained analysis of one sentence into an 80,000 word thesis guaranteed its automatic conversion into a sort of single authored monograph for publication. The psychoanalytic dimension of this ontology can be found in Ryle's 1949 project of describing mental states by identifying them with dispositions and from his inference ticket view of laws of nature. Meller objects to this semantics and ontology of dispositions by Ryle because of the differences in some factual respects. As a pragmatist, my intervention is similar to the Davidsonian causal critique of actual identity, not of counterfactual identity, which has sympathy for both Ryle and Mellor's rejection of Ryle. Mellor clearly damages Ryle in terms of reduction sentences, where factual predicates can be stated by conditionals. However, Mellor could have strengthened this attack further with Quine's word and object, instead of the predictable synthesis of Kripke's Wittgenstein on rules and private language with counterfactuals written by Lewis. As a pragmatic methodologist, Mellor perhaps should join my pragmatic methodology of analysing Ryle's functional orientation, where we focus on the delusion difference between the functions of talks of beliefs and talks of tables. It is here that declarative sentences can perform radically different functions. Quine enhances delusion differences in content by clarifying the multiplicity of Deleuze's rhizome with a singular logical syntactic device of existential quantification. Ryle can thus be read as a man who uses the term true and exists in a non-ambiguous univocal way. This clarity allows us to continue using the Rileyan metaphor that truth supplies factual dialogue with its essential esprit de corps. This opens up the space for speakers in a delusio Lacanian sense where a realist normative notion of truth governs speech to talk without metaphysical confirmation of the norm. The Lacanian input here psychoanalyzes the behavioural role of truth which is lacking in how Ryle establishes semantic relations between words and the world. In conclusion, Mellor's attack on Ryle has been so acute that it has led to Ryle being almost omitted altogether from the talks between fellows of New College at the University of Oxford in their debates about non-plural interpretations of higher order modal logic. The current debates in 2013 are now about compositional semantics, homophonic semantics, chunky style contingentism, higher order contingentism, minimalist contingentism, ultra-minimalist contingentism and the technical progress of the semantics of quantified modal logic. Kripke and Lewis have now lost their analytic charisma Perhaps the most important argument in philosophy today is now between Brandom's articulated reasons and introduction to inferentialism and my Principia Mathematica about language as a tool. Brandom argues that language has no purpose. My argument is that language does have a function or multiple functions.